Okay, today what we're going to do is a little tricky for a 13 year old. Um, the, you haven't seen the math for this and it's pretty much junior, senior in high school or freshman in college, but I'll try to do it in a way that is understandable. The, the thing we're going to do is called the ideal gas law. And this is a foundation of mechanical engineering. What we do is mechanical engineers use water all the time and steam to run machines like trains and, and um, power plants, um, refrigerators, not, not steam and refrigerators, but gases. And a gas, this is how gases operate, at the equation of how op gases operate in the world. Now, the equation for the ideal gas law is P times V is equal to N R T. Now what these letters stand for is the first one P is called pressure, the next one is called volume. Now N and T are constants, they don't change, so um, I don't have to really describe what they are, they're just a number and some units, but they don't change and we could just drop them off, but if we're talking to engineers, they're so, people are so used to having N and R there that we better just leave them and do our calculations assuming they're constants. Now the last one, like I said, is the, is the buddy of mechanical engineering, temperature. This is a, this is a degree in which we, use, we turn heat into movement or, um, or refrigeration or some, we, we really work with heat. Okay, now to, to demonstrate this, we're going to take a paint can, a aerosol can about this big, you, you play, paint things with it, or a WD-40 can that is a lubricant, also a spray, and we're going to toss this into a fire. Okay, now what happens is this can is a constant volume, volume being how big it is. So in this, this scenario where we toss the paint can into the fire, volume is not going to change. We know N and R are not going to change, so what's going to happen is that paint can is going to get hotter and hotter. And after about a minute, uh, a paint can will explode in a roaring fire. Not that I would know that. Anyhow, when the temperature is going up, and these are constant, volume is constant, pressure is going to rise. So, one to one. So as temperature goes up, pressure goes up, and what happens to a metal container is that when you put too much pressure on it, it just explodes. So a paint can in the fire with the volume constricted, temperature going up, will explode. Now let's take, let's take a different example where we actually use it, uh, not, an ex not to blow up a paint can. Now the first application in mechanical engineering to heat is a steam engine made a, a boiler ste or a steam engine of a train back in back in the 1800s and what we do is pretty much the same thing as a paint can we put flame underneath the boiler and we put water in it now this is exactly a paint can and if we don't do something this will explode well what we do is we put a, a valve on the top and we let this superheated steam uh, escape. Now, this steam that we're using is unlike steam that you know in the house. So usually you can make tea with it uh, as soon as water starts to boil. Um, this, is not, this is not that tea. The water in here, because it's under pressure, can be up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. When you have water in a pressured situation, it won't boil, at, it can boil higher than 212. The steam will be as high as 1,000 degrees F Fahrenheit because um, we're trying to push the metal as far as we can. This is at 1,000 degrees, this, the metal is still safe to operate with. Now, what happens in a steam engine is we have a piston, which is, it's in a tube, a solid tube, capped on both ends, and this tube has a rod on it this piston has a rod on it and that is that rod is connected to the 
wheel of a train. I don't know if I've drawn this correctly, probably down here a little bit. It's offset from a wheel of a train, and when the rod goes in and out, this slides back and forth, and the, the, pit, the wheel of the train turns. So we, we're going to go back and forth with this piston in a container. Now what we do here is we do a man, mechanical engineering trick where we, we route this, this hot steam back and forth. And if you want to see how this works, there's a fantastic drawing of it in How Things Work, uh, howthingswork.com, I guess. So it shows the, this mechanism going back and forth. But So basically what's happening is we, we're alternating between 1,000 degree heat uh, or steam on this side. And this is what's really tricky. That This is really clever about the, the steam engine is that we use, we put on the other side just regular air. Just out the ambient air of the surrounding 70 degrees. So what you have now in this in this apparatus is this 1,000 degree uh, heated steam which has got a massive high pressure is used to push this piston across in, in this direction. Now what this little apparatus at the top does is when the piston when the piston gets over here the 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 um, high pressure steam is reversed and now you have 1000 degree steam on this side and you have 70 degree air on this side. Now that you go, you're going back and forth alternating between 1000 on one side, regular ambient temperature on the other and you're getting a back and forth motion which you can use to drive the wheel of a train. Now this is different than a power plant, a coal power plant, in that in a coal power plant, the water is brought around and around and around in what's called a closed loop process. This is called open loop. And what happens here? Open loop. What's happening is the water in this boiler is progressively disappearing. You're, you're using it and it's squirting out of the steam engine. So if you've ever seen an old steam engine and you've seen the, 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 the hot water and steam getting blasted out of it, that's what happens. This water is essentially blasted out through a, a, an orifice that, that vents to the air. And what you need to generate a lot of power in mechanical engineering is a huge temperature difference. So you have 1,000 degrees minus 70, so you have a temperature degree, degree dif a temperature difference of about 930 degrees. And that is a massive temperature difference. Now, what you've got to do with this steam engine is you have to refill it every time you go to a, a station. When you're, you're taking your train and you're driving 100 miles station to station, you've got to go to a water tower and refill this boiler. You have to put more water in because while you're running, the water is, is squirting out into the atmosphere. And when you stop, you reload your coal, you reload your water, and you put the people on, take the people off. And it's a really clever way of a very simple mechanical, mechanical engineering system by just venting to the atmosphere and not having to try to figure out a way to, like, you'll see in the future a steam power plant where you actually have to run this around in a much more complicated fashion. So this is this is a case where we have the ideal glass law using almost the first system in which mechanical engineers use heat to move things. Now what I find as, as a mechanical engineer I would never have figured this out. This is really clever in which somebody says I'm gonna use heat and I'm going to get a machine to move. This is a fundamental part of mechanical engineering. And as I said earlier, MEs burn things to get things to move. And a steam engine is the, as an example of something that we got to move with, with heat. So the ideal gas law, if it's a friend of yours, we'll use it over and over in mechanical engineering. That's it.